Okay, so obviously you don't really need that much of an introduction because we all very well know who you are. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I Thanks know you're for super me. busy and we appreciate you. First off, we want to talk about your book because we know that that's what you're doing. You're on a tour to kind of really present and unfold your book for us. You know, the book is titled Lucky Me, A Memoir of Changing the Odds. And when reading your book, it's really a love letter to Cleveland. You know, talk about the findings in the book. You've got a lot of nuggets in there of, of passages and it's really your playbook of life and how you started from the bottom and you've really come up and you know, the man in the business that you've created today. Talk to us about it. Well, yeah, I think it's, um, it's definitely a, a love letter to Cleveland, just showing my appreciation for basically how I was raised, my community. I'm from the Glenville community. My dad had a small business there for many years. So my neighborhood actually raised me because I was the, the baby of the family in the store. So any and everybody that came in the store they saw me grow from a little kid to you know, a grown up and I learned my curriculum was from my dad's store. I learned math, I learned marketing, I learned customer service. I learned what it was like to, to really have a, a work ethic and a drive because my dad would get up every morning, 6 a.m., he's open. We're with him, me and my siblings. And um, as I grew up, I started to work the store and then by the time I was maybe 10, 11, I could actually run the store. You know, I can, the, the House of the Rose man would come in mm -hmm. and I would know what we needed and we would go to the bank and my dad would send us in there with the money and get back quarters for the video games that the kids wanted to play. So as you read the book, you find yourself, especially if you're from Cleveland, but anywhere, you find the pages kind of relating to you in some aspect. Um, talk about my mom a lot because you can't sugarcoat life, right? And Cleveland, growing up in Cleveland, all we saw was Cleveland. And sometimes, as you're looking in that mirror, you really didn't see the things that were being portrayed on TV and things like that. And so it can be kind of confusing, especially for a young kid. But I always had an unbelievable imagination, so I, I always had the confidence that I would do something and be somebody, despite the lack there of things that wasn't available to me because I didn't even understand what those resources should have been. And um, as I got into thinking about the book, the one thing I didn't want was a puff piece. Mm. I didn't need to look at what I did, look at, how much money was made, or because kids could be confused by that. We're not, we're showing them the highlights and you can't invest in the highlights. I wanted to show them that you don't necessarily have to finish where you start. There's gonna be roadblocks and barriers, but those things are really just temporary. And if you can mentally stay engaged and, and, and kind of just continue to persevere through, despite how hard it may seem at that moment, I wanted to show them that, no, it can get easier for you in terms of your understanding, but the work is always hard. You know, Anything worth having is gonna be hard to attain, and, but it's, it's a good hard, if that makes sense. Yeah, we talk about the things that you've overcome. We talk about this being a playbook of sorts because you talk about changing the odds yes. and, and your struggle and the hustle. And, you know, we can't help but also notice, you know, some of the other breakout big stars now that have also come from Northeast Ohio, talking about LeBron James and Machine Gun Kelly. And you guys were kids when you grew up in the streets of Cleveland and it wasn't so pretty. No. You know, talk about just as an example for kids some things that helped to push you through those tough times. I know that you talked about your mom in the book. Yes. I know that you talked about helping out your dad and, and the feats that you overcame. You know, talk about being a kid then and not knowing what you were capable of and what you've built now. The good thing is I've, you know, my older siblings, my brother and sisters, my community, for some reason, they always had a sense that I was going to be something they, if you talk to anybody, they'll say, we didn't really know what, but he always had this thing. Something. We always, you know, when you couldn't go into 
I had friends, my friend Mike Ivey, his mom would not let anybody in their living room. Mm -hmm. Couldn't even walk through it, you know? Like without shoes on? Period. Shoes on, okay. shoes off, whatever. But you come through the house, through the side door, you go to his room, you come back out through the side door. You didn't see the other three-fourths of her house because it was just that clean and she didn't play. But for some reason, she allowed me to be wherever I wanted, wanted to go. And so um, when I think about that, I become really appreciative of all those things because you need a balance. One thing about today's kids and that I really hate, social media doesn't allow you to dream, right? And so when I was young, we didn't have everything accessible to us. So you had to imagine this, you being in this place and that would push you and push you and push you. I had mini league coaches. I played little F baseball. I played little F basketball for Glenville Recreation mm -hmm. Center. Um, I played for Sims Raiders mini league football. And it was just repeated consistently because a lot of the coaches, they had been through the trials and tribulations of life. They understood they were having their own challenges that we didn't know as kids then, but they were trying to prevent us from making the same mistakes that they made. And so when I look at the kids today, I encourage them to understand like, it's going to be rough. You're not, when you're young and you're from the urban communities, black kids, we don't, we didn't, I didn't have an option. I didn't have an opportunity. That's all we were missing. Right, someone to actually care, someone to get, if you had a business plan, someone, you know, I didn't have that. My dad had to go to my uncle's credit union to borrow money just to send me to school, a school that I picked to go to, you know? Um, I brought that burden to him because I wanted to go to Benedictine and play basketball. So, but the options from an entrepreneurial, if you have an entrepreneurial spirit, those options aren't really there for you. So you have to turn to things that could be very risky um, to most people. It's definitely dangerous, but it's all you know and it's, you're trying to survive. We were just trying to get through the day. Mm -hmm. We couldn't plan ahead. And so when I was writing this book, I wanted to write the book. This is a gift from me to all of you, to all of everybody who is not even just from where I'm from, but who understands the challenges throughout life and who may be going through these same challenges now, I wanted to give young kids hope because sometimes you need to see a positive influence. Sometimes you need to see that drive and that resilience because if I just show you a Lamborghini in a big house, that could be a detriment to you because why are you showing me that? I can't get there. I don't see no way there. So now. I do things that become risky to my life, trying to attain that overnight, and that's just not realistic. I agree. We talk about dreams, right? We also talk about kids, you know, and you being a black man, right? And a lot of kids are looking up at you and thinking, how on earth did he get to where he I know. is, right? Yeah. You also mentioned in the book, which I resonated with as a black woman, about you not looking like many of the other people that have come before you and yeah. have been successful. And you, you know, refer to Jeff Bezos and, and all of those, those folks, but you were different. And so the standard was different for you. Yes. And I know that you don't want other black kids to be discouraged by the same no. obstacles that you face. So talk about that. Yeah, I thought, you know, the Rich Paul rule, that wasn't about me, that was about discouraging others. And that's what really bothered me about it when that came out a few years back. But you know, you're, you're absolutely right. As it pertains to, um, you know, when you think about what I was aligning with the, the, the people that are successful that don't look like me, I wanted to make sure kids understood. You have to give yourself an opportunity to be repositioned by being present. You can't make these decisions that you're making for clout today that's causing you to lose your life. Because whether it's your life or someone else's, it's both, right? It's a lose-lose situation. And we're seeing that in abundance today. And it's, it's really troubling because I cared about my teachers when I, was in, when I was in school. I wanted to go to school. I didn't want to skip school. That wasn't a cool thing to me. 
it wasn't cool to be a follower mm -hmm. per se. It's so much influence and pressure on these young kids today. And they're also not valuing their life to the place where we're all young, we all do things when we're young, right? And that may be make dumb decisions. But as you get older, you get another opportunity to make the right decisions and, can, and make right decisions consistently going forward. But they're not getting that opportunity. They're, their life has been cut off prior to. And that's why this book is so important. I want you to see yourself and read, and actually read the book. Don't just sit it on your shelf. Right. Read the book because I'm, I'm telling you, it will help you. It's not a look at what I did type of thing. It is, this is some of the decisions that I made that helped me get to a place where I can make another decision to help me get to a place to make another decision. You know, it's not, it's not zero to a hundred. That's just a Drake song. This is real life. This is, you know, you have to go up and over and, and back sometimes to go up and over again to get to your destination. Is that your message for kids? Because you got tons of like little nuggets and tidbits <laughs> and quotes that are in this book that you could take away with and make it, you know, like a, a, a caption on Instagram. But talk about the one message, if you could, that you could send kids away with or adults even, too. I think everybody, you know, you just have to continue to believe. You know, we all go through things as humans, despite any financial status that you have. Money doesn't solve problems. Money doesn't necessarily give you great health. You know, you got to keep your faith. You got to continue to believe. And the one thing that Cleveland does teach you is you got to make a way. You have to make a way. And it starts by you improving you, right? It's great to be a good person. It's okay to tell somebody, ask somebody how their day is going or tell them that they look nice. When I was growing up, it was the reverse. And I didn't, and we thought it was a game and you joke and it was just a thing we, mm -hmm. that you did. But as I look at it today, what that was is that was a cry out. When you see somebody and the first thing you have to say to them is negative, that's you crying out because you're going through something. A reflection of. 1,000%. And we took it as a joke, you know, snapping or whatever the case may be. But it was really you, you, you crying out. And so I just have a better understanding of life today uh, as I continue to persevere and and be placed in these rooms, I feel confident. Coming from a, a kid from Cleveland, no college degree, I'm in these board meetings just as confident as any board member, as any equity partner, as any um, you know, colleague in that, in, in that seat. And so I wanna continue to be an example for the youth. I wanna be accessible to them and know that I hear them, I see it, I hear them, but I'm also a product of them. So when they see me, see yourself and know that, that there is a way. Yeah, everybody here in Cleveland is rooting for you. You know Cleveland, we love our people. Yes, okay. yes, yes, and, and so, I love Cleveland, they yeah, know that. Yeah. And, and we know that you love us because we feel it. You made the time to come here today. You know, talk about, Cleveland's changed a lot, by the way. It has, since yeah. On the Mayor Bibb is doing a, a doing great good. job. He's really, he has a major challenge on his hands. And I know him being from Cleveland, he actually cares. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for people to understand some of the things he's trying to do is progressive and to move us forward. You know, we've been a city that's been, our growth has been stunted based upon decisions made by others years and years and years ago. But Cleveland lies on the, 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 the main artery of the heart of America for a reason. And so collectively, we have to get behind Mayor Bibb and help him with the push that he's trying to make for the city. Switching gears just a little bit because, I mean, we're not going to get too far into it, but I just have to mention, I mean, you've built this billion dollar brand for yourself. I mean, um, you've also just, I mean, you've even got like a sneaker. Yes. Named after the you, which is really agent, cool. The only the CEO only is agent sneaker. Yeah. and CEO that's got a shoe named after. This is so cool. What's next for you? I mean. Well, I don't know if you know, we started Clutch Athletics, which is a performance sportswear brand. Um, that sits on the, 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 the axis of, of style and performance. Uh, that's something that I'm really passionate about. I, as a kid, I was always into mm -hmm. fashion. And this is more so from a sports perspective with a little taste of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I really think we have an opportunity in the marketplace. 
I really think that, you know, the youth will identify with it. I wanted to bring it back to community. I wanted it to be accessible. I wanted it to be affordable, but also of quality. And I think as it's, we're in 100 stores, we're in DTLR, we're in JD Sports, we're in Foot Lockers, we're in Dick Sporting Goods. And I partner with New Balance. Mm -hmm. they, they are uh, my partner. They, they do all my manufacturing distribution. We sit inside of New Balance. And so that's been a great partnership. It's only been like nine months. So we're coming out with our first season. We, we've had a great response, but I think as kids start to really identify with the brand, they're gonna like it. And as much as it's about product, it's also about opportunity. Because my vision is we support a lot of brands that don't support us, right? right? Mm -hmm. I wanna create an opportunity to give back to kids, to help them understand you don't have to go to college to be a designer. You don't have to necessarily go to college to be a, understand brand marketing and things like that. I wanna create programs that help these kids learn straight from high school into these programs, and then you can transition into getting the opportunity to have a job with us. So that's my big picture. I'm not there yet, mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately the brand is in the marketplace. We, I wanted to focus on the communities that did not get the attention, mm. right? Because I, I was from a place that did not get the attention. I didn't have Fifth Avenue. I didn't have Rodeo to go down and find the hottest things or Melrose. Mm. And so that's something I'm really passionate about. Every day I get up, we look at other sports, other companies to buy, mm. other ways to add to our portfolio and add to our, you know, our team to continue to build and have the best team in place to represent our clients as holistically as we possibly can. And so um, I'm never complacent. You know, I'm always, you know, just driven and, and, and I enjoy it though. I'm having a lot of fun. I know people think, oh, well, when LeBron retires and he owns the team, are you going with an owner team? I don't want to own a team. I help him build a great team, but I don't want to own a team. I don't have enough money to own a team. So I, Cleveland, don't, we also don't fake it in Cleveland. So it's nothing for me to fake there, um, but I'm really just enjoying. I enjoy being an example, a great example for the youth. I enjoy representing my family in the way I do. You know, I have kids and being a great father to them and, and also a great example to them as well. And so it's always great to come back home and to feel the love, but I, I, I never not feel the love. You know, I'm one guy who I think no matter where I go, whether it's the Glenville community, where it's whether it's the Kinsman Harvard, mm -hmm. Miles area, whether it's you know, the 55th area, or even suburbs, people show me a lot of love and support, and I really appreciate it. And you give that love back. Yeah. Uh, three things, three of your favorite things in Cleveland. Go, that could be like your favorite restaurant. place to visit. Oh, restaurant. Visit? Well, John John's. Okay. On Mayfield. Okay, then like your favorite place to eat, visit, and do. John John's is one on, on Mayfield, but also I have to get a corned beef, so I come to Slyman's. <laughs> You know, I have to go to Slyman's. Uh, do, when I come home, I really just spend time with my friends, you know. The, the, I have the same friends I had 30 years ago, so that, that hasn't. And they're all still in Cleveland. Most of them are all wow. still in Cleveland, they haven't changed. I, I have to get my hair cut. I have the best barber, his name is Elliot Cleveland? Mills. Yeah, yeah, okay. he's the best. So I have to get my hair cut by, I, I really feel like I'm in a chair and I'm yeah. getting a superpower <laughs> when I get my hair cut by yeah. L, right? Walk out with a cape on. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, but you know, and then, you know, I see, I see, I have Darius and Tristan back now. Yeah. And so, um, awesome. it'll be good to, to hang out with them. I, I love going to, to games and even on the football side, we have a bunch of Browns, Jedrick and Miles and, right. and, uh, DPJ. And so I enjoy that. I just enjoy everything. I just hang out. I see friends and family from Akron to Cleveland all, and all over. And so it's all good. Okay. Yeah. Last question. Your favorite Adele song. Ooh. Ooh. There's so many. There is, <laughs> know, there is so a lot. Many. You know, um, that's tough. I know. But if I have to name one from this current al album, it would be Hold On. Because it, it really, that? it really, um, for me it was about my mom. Mm -hmm. And my mom had this, um, you know, she struggled. She struggled, but oftentimes, I just felt like when I heard that record, I immediately thought about my mom because, you know, you never know the sacrifices people make. Mm -hmm. And it would seem to be that they're doing an act and don't care about mm -hmm. you. But I never seen my mom 
do anything that I knew she struggled with. And so I knew she was giving an effort for mm -hmm. us not to see that. that. And so that was her loving us in that capacity. And mm -hmm. so when I hear that record, if you listen to it, it's, it really resonated with me that that's just her, but her pain mm -hmm. and also her strength. Right. And so I would say, I would say, hold on. I love yeah. that. You know, you've conquered pretty much everything. I mean, you're doing amazing things. You're going to keep climbing. The one thing that you've conquered is your romance with Adele. And I know <laughs> that you guys don't really talk about it too no. much. But, you know, how incredible to have that as your partner. Yeah, you know, you try partner. not to talk about it. I'm not a, a openly personal sure. guy, and, and I, I get flagged for it. I, I see stuff online <laughs> sometimes where she said this and he didn't say that. You know, I just, I just refuse to do that, right? I think it's important for people to share time. You know, the, the, the most important thing somebody can give you is their time. Right. And you want to enjoy it. And um, I don't do things for show. I don't do things for the media. But I get I get. Obviously, it, it, it's a public thing, but you know, you just have to stay in the moment and, 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 and enjoy the person you're with. So, um, I'm in a good space. Of course, yeah. I love that. Okay, really last question, I promise, and we won't ask any more. We're going to talk about really quickly did you read as a kid? I did. did you loved it? Yeah, I did read as a kid, but you know, my grandmother, my grandma Ruth, she had these, I lived on Edmonton. Um, and 125th Street, mm -hmm. and my grandma Ruth, she had these encyclopedias, yeah. and they was there, and it was, I think everyone in America, yeah. definitely in Cleveland, had this set of encyclopedias, yeah. right? And I used to always just open up an encyclopedia and just read, we didn't have social media, thank God, yeah. we didn't have it. You were just in a book. And I was just in the book, and then, you know, going, remember having book fairs, Mm -hmm. And then by the time I got to Benedictine, we actually had what you call summer reading, mm -hmm. where we had to read a book over the summer. And probably like the first two weeks of school, we had tests. And so it got, it went from reading Ramona and Charlotte's Web and, you know, kid friendly books like that to all the way to reading, uh, you know, Lord of the Flies and having a mm -hmm. test on it, right? But then when I was a kid also, and some of the some of the older people watching would, would get a kick out of this. Back in the day, they used to have what you call the step out book. Step out book. So it was a book that you step out at nighttime. You go to the clubs, okay, and it had all these book. people. You be in Johnny's and JT's okay. and the Tigers in the California Club yeah. and the Togo. And I, as a kid, my dad and my mom, you know, they would get that, and so I would read that too. So I was reading everything. Yeah. I love that. We're yeah. obviously here at Channel Three. We're super big on trying to get kids to read. We have this initiative, it's called Cleveland Reads. Yeah, it's important to read though, it really is. Yeah.